So chromosomal abnormalities can also only apply to parts of the chromosome rather than um, having a full extra copy of a chromosome or missing an entire copy. And some of examples of aneuploidies where only part of the chromosome is affected are deletions and duplications. And so in a duplication, there is an extra copy of part of a chromosome. So a chromosome might be a little bit longer on either end than its counterpart chromosome. And in a deletion, a chromosome might be missing a small part or piece. You can actually see an example of a deletion over here in this karyotype or this chromosome uh, map for an individual. If you zoom in here on chromosome 5, we can see that there are two copies of chromosome 5. So there's not an entire missing copy or an entire extra copy, but rather there's a small piece missing on this chromosome on the right as compared to the one on the left. You can see the two green dots in this guy on the left, and now that area, that short piece of this arm, is no longer visible. And that is how we would define a deletion, missing a small part of a chromosome. In a duplication, what you might see is this chromosome here having another area up top with two additional green dots. And so in addition to just lacking some chromosome or having a little bit extra, having full extra copies um, or missing a copy, there can also be just rearrangements of a chromosome structure where none of the chromosome is technically missing from your genome, but it's not in the correct order or in the correct place. And so two of these rearrangement type situations are inversions and translocations. And there's an example up top here of an inversion. And in a chromosomal inversion, we actually see the genes on a chromosome flipped and reversed in their order. And so you can think of it as kind of like a Missy Elliott work it situation. The genes have been flipped and reversed. And so you can see in the chromosome on the left, all these genes are in alphabetical order, but in the one that has experienced an inversion, now A is still at the top of this arm of the chromosome, but now B, C, and D have been flipped and reversed in order. And this can change the orientation of some genes, um, and it might make the genes in the area of the inversion non-functional. So the other situation of rearrangement in a chromosome is a translocation. And so a translocation can be seen down here in this image. And in a translocation, part of a single chromosome detaches from one chromosome and then reattaches itself to a different chromosome. And this might sound a little bit to you like crossing over in meiosis. Um, and the major difference is that in crossing over, chromosomes are able to switch DNA between themselves, but those two chromosomes are homologous meaning that it's two copies of chromosome one who are switching their genes or who are detaching little pieces and switching them between themselves. And that's perfectly fine. The chromosomes end up on their homologous pair um, and you don't lose any function. But in the case of a translocation, you have genes from chromosome two here being translocated or detached and moved to chromosome three down here, moving to a completely different chromosome. Here you can see some chromosome three has been moved up to chromosome two. And so now you have these mixtures of genes that should be on chromosome three here and genes that should be on chromosome two here. And after a translocation, it's possible that the translocated piece or the part that's moved those genes that are there might not be functional as well, right? And so in terms of chromosomal abnormalities, we have monosomies and trisomies where you can have less um, chromosomes or more chromosomes in a particular genomic location. We've got deletions and duplications where you might be missing a small part of a chromosome or you might have gained a small part. 
Um, and then we have these inversions and translocations or rearrangements of the genes in the chromosome. So some examples of what a deletion might look like in terms of a syndrome can be seen on the next couple slides. So this first um, syndrome is called Engelmann's and it is a deletion of just part of chromosome 15 in humans. And ultimately Engelmann's is a nervous system disorder. It leads to delays in development <laughs> as well as um, some intellectual and speech impairment in children, um, as well as issues with motor coordination, movement, and balance. So kids who have Engelmann's, like these two individuals on the right, will be um, extremely hyperactive. They will have a very happy demeanor. They're often constantly smiling and laughing. They end up having um, a very short attention span and fascination with water, as well as um, they tend to not sleep very well, and they rely um, on less sleep than a normal child would. In terms of like a physical phenotype you may see, there are some characteristic facial features of Engelmann's patients, and they tend to also be very fair skinned, so very light skin, and also very fair haired and have a very light blonde hair. They are at risk of seizures because this is a nervous system disorder. Um, and one thing as an Engelmann's patient ages is that usually their hyperactivity kind of comes down. They're able to get more control of their attention span. Um, their sleep may get better over time as well. Um, and they won't display some of those um, hyperactive behaviors like the hand flapping or the constant laughter and smiling, um, but they do remain at risk for seizures for the course of their life, and they do retain most of the speech and developmental impairments. And then another example of a deletion is called Cree du Chat syndrome. Um, this is a deletion of that part of chromosome 5, which I showed you a couple of slides ago. So missing that small piece of chromosome 5 results in this developmental disorder. And it's called Cree du Chat syndrome because one of the major hallmarks for diagnosis in small infants is a cry that sounds like a cat. And so Cree du Chat means cry of the cat. Um, these infants will have a very high pitched, almost meow like cry. If you want to hear what that sounds like, you can click on this link here in the slides and hear how similar that um, human cry sounds to a cat. Um, there are some characteristic facial features of patients who have Cree du Chat syndrome as well. They tend to have a smaller head as part of their delay in development. This is sometimes called a microcephaly. Their eyes are very wide set, as you can see with this patient here, and they tend to have lower set ears and a smaller jaw. Um, they often at birth are born at a smaller size or weight, and they may have a lot of muscle weakness, which is related to um, the slow development. They can um, also experience some intellectual and speech impairments, as well as long term, um, they may experience defects in their heart. And so these um, disorders or syndromes, Down syndrome, Cree du Chat, Engelmann's, they're all um, syndromes that are serious, but that can um, be lived with in certain cases for a long time. And so we want to know that an individual has these syndromes so that we can um, adequately make medical decisions and lifestyle changes that would keep that person as happy and healthy as possible. Um, and so in order to diagnose a chromosomal abnormality, <clears throat> there's an entire field devoted to studying the number of chromosomes as well as their structure. And this field is called cytogenetics. And so in order to determine if an individual has a chromosomal abnormality, we can actually create karyotypes or those chromosome maps, like I showed you on some of the previous slides, 
to look at the number of their chromosomes and make sure they're both the same size and they don't have any deletions or um, duplications. And the way that that works is that you would take a blood sample from an individual and you would remove some of those blood cells and grow them in a dish or in vitro. And then we know that cells normally, if they're just in their normal state, they don't have chromosomes in them. They have chromatin, but it's not packaged into chromosomes. And so in order to see the chromosomes and be able to match them up by number and size, we have to stimulate those cells to divide. Because when cells are dividing, that's when they have those chromosomes. So cells are stimulated to go into mitosis and start dividing, and then solutions are added that basically release the chromosomes from the cell. And then those chromosomes can be fixed or stuck onto microscope slides and stained so that we can visualize them, especially those band patterns, and then start to organize them and create a karyotype. And that's what you guys are going to do in your cytogenetics assignment that's um, on Canvas.